there's an old 12 step saying that you can't read the label when you're inside the bottle. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't, has more to do than with drug or alcohol addiction. What it has to do with if you're inside depression, if you're inside anxiety, if you're inside heartache, you can't read the label on it. I'm sure that you've had girlfriends and guy friends and maybe yourself. You had a girlfriend or a guy friend and you said to yourself, what is that person doing with them? They're so awful to them. And because you can read the label. And maybe when, if you'd mention that to that person, they'd get pretty angry with you. Oh, absolutely. Like <laughs> 99% of the time. And I've had friends when I've ended relationships where they were like, oh, thank goodness. I never liked them anyway. Well, why didn't you tell me? But who knows if I would have listened in the moment. But it is, it's that... And and my heart aches for those for the that cyclical that coming back to that cyclical relationship where they aren't happy and there is all that love and there are those roller coasters of highs, but then there is that repeating problem, that repeating pattern, that repeating and to step back and say, all right. Let's put love on a shelf for a moment. We're not making this unimportant, but let's put this up here. Now, what does this relationship look like? Am I, what are these precious things that are important to me? Are they being valued? Am I able to value somebody else's? Because it's not always about you. I, one of the best things, the best perspectives I learned in therapy, like going through the end of my marriage and through divorce was my therapist pointed out to go, just because somebody else has a different way of doing it doesn't mean that their way of doing it is invalid, where it might be about somebody else seeking their needs to be met might be hurtful to you. But that doesn't make, you know, my marriage, I could not meet his needs without hurting myself. You can both he be right. Couldn't, exactly. And, and he couldn't meet my needs without hurting himself. And so we were both being hurt. But there was love that doesn't make, and, and I, I believed it for years and I have seen it to my own detriment and heartache over and over again. Love is not enough. Love is an indicator. But put that on a shelf and look about, like, can I meet this person's needs without... Right? Can they meet my needs? And if that's not the case, it hurts, Tim, but it's okay. Yes, it, yes, it does hurt. And, that, and then we acknowledge that hurt. And when we're dealing with someone quite often, what we'll do is say, okay, tell me exactly how you feel. And we can help them out with that also. But then we have to say, okay, let's check the facts of this situation. Let's check the facts. Be objective and check the facts, and then we have. Then we ask ourselves: Do the facts of this situation justify the way that I'm feeling? Right. Do the facts justify the way that I'm feeling? Sometimes yes, sometimes definitely no. Okay. So when we help people develop that sense of the I self to look at situations rather than from them, and to help people understand that when they're operating out of an emotional mind, and that wise mind choices aren't always the easy ones or the obvious ones, the no-brainer ones. They can be painful and very difficult to make, like ending a relationship. It may be a wise mind choice, but it can be so painful. It is incredibly painful. And yes, sometimes the world will end. For that, a moment. Yeah, for a moment, exactly. And it's, it's okay. That is all right. I had another friend who wasn't sure if their marriage was going to work. And I said, this will be bigger than you can imagine. This will be harder than you're afraid of. But it will be okay, and you will make it through. And if that's the right thing, then this might be the best for you both. But it is going to be terrible, and I'm with you. So some of the things that we've reviewed today is it's important to validate other people's feelings. It's important to help them label and identify thoughts and feelings. It's important to help them understand that they feel this way in this moment. It's important to help them for self-concept and self-esteem to identify 
the requirements. What does it take to be with me rather than what do I have to offer? These I am statements, these validating statements. So quite often what we'll do is we'll say, okay, we generally look at the negative consequences, then go back through that chain of events and find out what happened. But rather, when something goes right, mm. <laughs> we don't go back through that chain of events and no. find out what caused this positive outcome and had to and reinforce those. So you tell me that you're in a excellent relationship at the moment. So what is good about this? What is good about this relationship? What's a chain of events? What caused this positive outcome? Oh, what caused the positive outcome? Um, that is harder to answer. And I want to, I want to follow the positive chain instead of, yes. well, I just found this fantastic relationship for the first time that it's great. That's, uh, that's not productive thinking. Um, I had been through enough where there i'm i'm going to grossly misquote scripture but there's a there's a, a verse that said that the food that i craved as a child i got sick on as an adult and i hate to think that i gorged on relationships where i was not protecting myself where i wasn't coming from here but it was well, I'm being hurt, and I really wish that this would change, and I really wish, or an allowing people to hurt, and even allowing myself to be where I wasn't meeting other people's needs. I got sick on that, and I was finally able to see, and I am still learning, somebody else is protecting my boundaries more than me. So that being put above is an incredibly humbling and vulnerable place to be. And for the first time, I want to protect somebody else and somebody else's interests more than my own. I have never been in that position. And it's incredibly vulnerable. It is so easy, and this is what I've seen in my own relationships, but in most of the relationships that I've seen, as soon as we start I, I, I need, you didn't do this thing and I need you to trust and encourage somebody else, trusting that they will encourage you that positive cycle. But how often when we're hurt, I, I didn't do, and you did this thing and I just, and then it's this defense and you stop trusting. Even if you don't realize you stop trusting that other person and you start needing instead of giving so you start entering the cycle of trust and giving. So even when you're hurt to go, I am going to reach out and I will give encouragement. I will give time. I will give and trusting that they will also give that back. So once you get past the the physical attractive sure. too, that people yep. have to each other, uh, which is the first thing which people generally put way down a list, but it's first, uh, what attracted you to this individual? The first thing is he became my best friend. He was the first person I wanted to tell everything. I hate it when I have surprises for him because I can't tell him about it. What's a, uh, what's a, what's a best friend? What makes a best friend? Not just somebody that you want to tell everything to, but some, the first person that you want to experience the good things with. What are the requirements it takes? If you were going to put in the ingredients to make a best friend for Joanna, what would it, what would they be? What would Ooh. they consist of? Somebody who talks. I, one of my ways of processing that I find valuable is I need somebody to empty my thoughts to. Sometimes I call it ramble. Can I, can I ramble for a minute? I just need to. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. But somebody to not just be a container for my thoughts, but to to help me process them and, and present them back. To be like, these thoughts are important, even if you repeated yourself 20 times. These thoughts are important, and and I see them, and this is why they're important, and to enjoy that. And I like doing the same. Okay, now it's your turn. Ramble. I laugh so much. And instead of feeling like a ridiculous 
person in the in an outline of a normal social construct because so often I feel like a ridiculous person who is hiding in 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 a person that sort of looks normal on the outside. So you feel that you're not being judged. No. I am not being judged and I am encouraged to be my most self. This was maybe the moment when I knew that he was the the like you said from now and forever forever is a is not a useful thing to talk about but that he was the person in this moment that was right when he told me why would i ever want you to be less you my heart just i was done for okay so and again, we get back to what are the requirements it takes to be with you. Well, one of them was to be a good listener, absolutely listener. The other one was to be non judgmental. And the other, what you're talking about now, is them giving you the freedom to decide. The freedom to decide to be yourself. You didn't have to mold yourself to be in his template of what, of what his life is. Yeah. Of what his conception of what a girlfriend is. It sounds like he's a very, he's a, he has that beginner's mind. What else, Joanna? The other thing I've known for years that the most important thing to me, um, ahead of relationships, ahead of other life goals, was I know my art is the work I am supposed to do in this life. That is my passion. That is my heart. And he, we were, we were talking about art and, and he's not, um, he is not at all in, in the artistic, he has appreciation for it, but he's not an artist. Um, but he loves my art and he even, he put it above his own work. He said the, the only thing above, okay, our relationship to make sure that we are okay, that we are okay the most important thing is your art, and I will fight to make sure that you are able to do that. So he respects Full you. Full stop. Yeah. He respects you. And nobody has supported my art that way mm. except for my parents. My mm. parents were like, we see you. We believe you. We will help you financially, time-wise, sitting, how to do this thing that we know is your soul. So you went through all of these things that we've talked about today and molded the person that you are today. And rather looking at something, somebody to fulfill you, you're looking for someone to compliment you, not to tell you you're pretty or intelligent, right. but someone who works together with a synergy where one plus one equals three. Okay. However, first of all, and in the 12-step world, we say that relationships are not like geometry. Two halves don't make a whole. No. Okay. So you had to find out a whole lot about yourself and your own self-concept and your own self-esteem before maybe a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, would you have been prepared to have this type of relationship? I don't know. I don't know either. And I, I, um, I might have eventually gotten here, but I certainly was not prepared to see this is, this is what I have not required of myself in all of my previous relationships. And that's something else. Like I did not require love and respect of myself in my other relationships. And if you don't start from the I, how can you possibly give that and, and expect a relationship to be okay. So we're taught that selfishness and self-centeredness is a horrible thing. Mm -hmm. But unless you take care of yourself <laughs> first... How could you possibly grow? Uh, how would you, if unless you love yourself, how could you possibly love anybody else? Yeah. You can only love the world, love another person in direct relation to how much you love yourself. One of the things that I heard, and this is it's it's related. Um, somebody said that the most one of the most attractive things they can see in another person is ambition. Now it sounds. Let me let me go into that. But ambition at its core means I I want to grow. I am not done growing. And 
don't you want to keep getting better and growing and becoming more yourself? And don't, that is why that is the, one of the most attractive things in somebody else, somebody else who values themselves enough to like, I'm not done yet. I've got my life. I'm going to keep going. And that doesn't, and getting better, I don't think that's, but but I'm not done. I'm not done until the day that I die. And I want a partner who isn't done. And I want to be somebody who's not done for them. Well, quite often in relationships, we fear when somebody else wants to grow or wants to get involved in something else because then we have that fear that uh, abandonment. Right. Well, acknowledge that fear. And if, if they, if they leave, well, that is either, uh, they were not, their needs were not being met or they are proving themselves their actions are the person that they that they were. I had a relationship where I he was so fun and so nice and and it was easy to be except he, he was never there. It was totally unreliable and he would disappear and he would disappear but when he was there Jim when he was there and he would encourage my art and everything but then he would disappear and I kept going why would somebody that loved me do that loves me do that and The answer, that was the wrong question. It was, he doesn't love me enough to stay. He doesn't respect me enough. And he was too afraid. It was his own fear and it wasn't about me. And instead of going, this amazing person that's doing this really shitty thing, it was, this person is doing this shitty thing and that's who he is. That's who they are. Yeah. That's correct. Quite often we wonder, we say, why does a person do something like that? Well, because they do. What type of person would do that? Well, that type of a person. So, Joanna, often people will press it. Well, what are you going to do now, Joanna? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, quite often we don't know what to do, and that's okay. However, I'll almost guarantee that you know what not to do. Yes. And as far as relationships goes, do we know what not to do? Okay. So... I think we've had a really wonderful conversation today. And so in summary, what would you say to the person out there who's feeling that, oh boy, no one loves me. No one, I I can't fit in anywhere. I have no friends. First, that I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that they don't feel seen, but that they are valuable and they are worth it. But, not but, and they're worth loving themselves first. And I would encourage them to, to start seeking their, their own joy, make their own magic. There is, I can't speak Make their enough. own magic. For this is what makes me happy, and that is valuable. So start valuing those treasures that you have, and others will see it. And it might not look the way that they that they want or that they think it should. Oh, but people will value them. Perhaps not the people that you want to see them. Yes. But however, have an open mind that others may see those also. So if anyone has any comments or questions concerning this program, please feel free to uh, contact the show. We'll be glad to respond. Anything is certainly acceptable. And at the end of every podcast, we offer a free prescription. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we suggest that you fish without bait. Do a kindness for another. Do a kindness for yourself. Forgive another. Forgive yourself until all are free. None are free. Namaste. Please check out our website at fishingwithoutbait.com, where you can listen to the show, comment on our discussions, and find out where you can subscribe to our podcast. If you're interested in flying the colors of Fishing Without Bait, click the shop icon on our website. We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.
Dot com.